members of campus executive management team, the UE St. Augustine. Heads of department, deputy deans, the UE St. Augustine campus. Ms. Michelle Dindial, branch sales manager, UE branch and other managers of the office and officers of Republic Bank Limited. Feature speaker, Dr. Camille Wardrop Allen, aerospace engineer, CEO and the founder Arusha Space LLC. Representatives from CAF, Development Bank of the Latin America and the Caribbean. Specially invited guests, students, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I welcome you on behalf of the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus and the Division of Student Services and Development. Welcome to our 2024-2025 launch of the UE Republic Bank World of Work Program. Every year around this time, I am filled with anticipation for the unique opportunities that are ahead for you, our final year students. It is a year filled with immersive interventions to prepare you for the world of work. Our contributing sponsor, Republic Bank Limited, has partnered with us for over 23 years to prepare you for this transition. <clears throat> People always ask how we have sustained this program's credibility and success. The answer is that we have developed a tried and proven blueprint for designing interventions that are responsive to the needs of our students and our stakeholders. We do this with the unwavering support of our industry partners who continue to collaborate with us and choose our students over other graduates. They attest to the validity and the reliability of our program. The Republic Bank Limited, our contributing sponsor, and the Development Bank of Latin America and the Caribbean, our partnership sponsor for today's World of Work launch, can both attest to the program's success. The testimonials you will hear today will also speak to the possibilities that the program offers. Students, you are part of a great tradition that will transform your life, and it starts today. The blueprint not only prepares you with the tools you need to transition and succeed in the world of work, like perfecting your resume and preparing for the interview. It also provides opportunities for you to engage with industry partners who will take you through mock interviews, giving the feedback you need to excel. And they do this actually over two Saturdays in semester two. And then they returned in about a month to the recruitment fair and they scout the best talent in the higher education landscape in the Caribbean, from the number one university in the Caribbean. Our blueprint also responds to the industry and global requirements of the 21st century graduate by providing you with experts over the course of the program that help prepare you to develop the skills and the competencies needed to succeed in this fast-paced, diverse, and technologically advanced workforce. You will hear from some of these experts at today's launch. Together with our industry partners, we help you understand how to articulate and operationalize what you learn in the classroom. Employers want to see your ability to think critically and work in teams to solve problems. 
we invite experts to guide you in the ethical use of technology to advance solution to the world's problems. Through these experiences, your innovations, your creative solutions will change the world for the betterment of those inhabiting it. So, our blueprint developed over the years will position you to excel in the world of work. But that's only if you students commit to taking advantage of the year-long interventions, workshops, and opportunities uniquely crafted for your benefit. Today, you will hear from one of our campus experts in student development. You'll hear from our title sponsor, Republic Bank Limited. You will hear from students who have taken advantage of the World of Work program in the past and are now successfully negotiating spaces and pursuing their career goals. You will also hear from a NASA scientist whom we have been trying to connect with for three years <laughs> because of our theme for our program, Prepare to Launch. The connection is obvious. They are all here today for you students. I am very excited, and I hope you are too. So let's move on with our program, and to begin this afternoon, I want to invite Professor Derek Chady, our campus deputy principal, and this is the expert in student development I would have mentioned. And Professor Chady is going to bring greetings on behalf of the university. Thank you very much, Chair. Members of the campus executive, management team of the St. Augustine campus, our feature speaker, Dr. Camille Wardrop Allen, and you are on earth now, you know. You know, there's a saying, Houston, we have a problem. Well, Houston, Houston we have you here. <laughs> you know, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant good afternoon. It is a distinct honor to address all of you at this seminar and launch of the 24th, 2024-25 installation of the World of Work program. A very special welcome to our bright student participants, and I see quite a lot of you are here with us. Your presence here show that you recognize the immense value in preparing for what is with all question, a rapidly changing and competitive global job market. I must begin, however, by expressing heartfelt gratitude to our title sponsor, Republic Bank Limited, your unwavering commitment to supporting this campus has been a pillar of strength in our effort to shape future generation professionals. The UWI St. Augustine cherishes this enduring partnership, and we are profoundly grateful for your continued support. Students, as we embark on this new cycle, I want to impress upon you how pivotal the World of Work program will be as you stand on the threshold of your careers. Yes, I know many of you are eagerly awaiting the recruitment fear, but let me assure you, every single aspect of this program has been meticulously designed to elevate your skills and mindset. This program is more than just a series of workshops. It is carefully designed to guide you into resilient, agile, and forward-thinking professionals. This year's theme, Mission Planet World of Work prepare to launch, perfectly encapsulates the journey you are about to undertake. The knowledge and skills you gain here are the fuel, but you are the ones who will chart and pilot the course. The world 
is at your fingertips and it is yours to navigate. In this e era of hyper-connectivity and innovation, how you choose to prepare will determine not just your immediate success, but your long-term journey. As we look to the future, it is important to consider the context in which you will be launching your careers. Many of you belong to Generation Z, a generation that is defined by adaptability, your digital fluency, your global consciousness, and your desire for purpose. And we should always remember that the generation that we belong to and the idiosyncrasies that we carry because of the generation we are part of. Unlike any generation before you, you will have access to tools and opportunities that can break traditional barriers. And don't forget that. You are not just stepping into the workforce. You're stepping into a world that you can shape, transform, and lead. Our students are known for their drive to challenge the status quo. And partly, we train you to do so. And to seek careers that, are not, only, that not only offer financial stability, but also align with personal values and the global impact. Employers today are searching for exactly that combination of passion and purpose. You are part of a generation that can redefine industries, create situ solutions to burning issues and develop the technology that will power the next century. That's why this program is so crucial. It is not just preparing you for jobs. It is preparing you to be leaders, change makers, and innovators. Remember though, no matter how much guidance you receive from this program, the true driver of your success is you. You control the trajectory. You set the pace. You decide how high you'll fly. You will, while we can equip you with the tools and knowledge, it's up to you to seize these opportunities, internalize the lessons, and turn them into action. Don't just aspire to land a job. Aspire to build a meaningful career and to become a leader in your field. We're privileged this afternoon to hear from an individual who truly exemplifies what it means to soar. Dr. Camille Wardrop Alain is a Caribbean trailblazer who has excelled in her role as an aerospace executive, rocket engineer, space scientist, internationally acclaimed speaker, writer, educational leader, and science ambassador. She has shattered glass ceilings and defied limits in her career. Her life's work is an inspiring testimony to the power of vision, resilience, and perseverance. And I say that, perseverance. Dr. Woodruff Allen, we are honored to have you here today to inspire our students as they prepare to start their own careers. I know they will leave today with renewed purpose after hearing your story. Before I conclude, I must extend my thanks to Mrs. Katia Lewis and her team, dedicated team from the Division of Student Services and Development and the Marketing and Communication Office for their tireless work in organizing this event. Your effort continues to make this program a beacon of opportunity and development for our students. To everyone who has contributed to this year's World of Work program, your support is invaluable. And I'm confident that this year's program will be a tremendous success. Students, this is your moment. You are the future. So let's move forward together with purpose, with passion, and with unshakable belief in the extraordinary potential that each of you carries. 
Enjoy this afternoon seminar and remember, it is now your time to soar. Thanks very much. Thank you, Deputy Principal, for conveying so many inspiring words to our students. And students, please remember, the true driver of success lies within. At this time, I would like to invite Ms. Vianney Marie Williams, former World of Work participant, currently serving as research assistant at the Ministry of Planning and Development Environmental Policy and Planning Division. Fiani. Good afternoon, students. My name is Vianney Marie Williams and I'm a proud graduate of the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus. I graduated with honors from the UE in 2022 with a BSc in Biology and Environmental Science, and I was also awarded the Isa Wright Nature Center Prize for the best year three performance in environmental science. I am an aspiring waste management consultant, and I am currently a research assistant under the Chemicals and Waste Focal Area of the Environmental Policy and Planning Division of the Ministry of Planning and Development. I ascribe my success thus far to the quote I used at my award ceremony. Family prayer and support is the solid foundation for success. During my final year of the UE, I became especially proactive in my personal career development and I took advantage of every opportunity offered by the Division of Student Services and Development, including becoming a student career facilitator and participating in the World of Work program. The WOW program was an invaluable experience. Each session was expertly facilitated by knowledgeable professionals. They helped me to realize the skills and competencies I needed to improve and develop for a successful transition out of university life and into the working world. These skills and competencies included effective communication, critical, critical and creative and thinking, thinking, a strong work a strong ethic, interpersonal and being knowledgeable and informed, among others. The WOW program culminates with a recruitment fair and participation in all sessions from resume writing and interview preparation to LinkedIn optimization and personal branding ensures that you are well prepared to interact with potential recruiters. I was fortunate to have my mock interview facilitated by the Environmental Services Division of Advisors Next Door Limited a multidisciplinary consulting firm. Using the skills and competencies I honed through the WOW program, I was well prepared for the interview, and it resulted in the director and principal environmental consultant of Advisors Next Door Limited, Mr. Ryan Asu, requesting that I apply for their summer internship program called Advisors Next Door. I spoke to Mr. Asu again at the World of Work Recruitment Fair, and I am proud to say that I am a graduate of the 2022 Advisors Academy Internship Program. Thank you. <laughs> at that time, I also became involved in an environmental youth NGO called the Caribbean Youth Environment Network in Trinidad and Tobago, C-Y-E-N-T-T. Through CYENTT, I had the opportunity to represent youth on numerous occasions, including national conferences. I took those opportunities to network and meet established professionals in my field of interest, waste management. I joined the Ministry of Planning and Development's Environmental Policy and Planning Division, EPPD, at the end of 2022 
where I continue to use and further develop my skills and competencies to navigate the world of work. My experience has been that building relationships and connections in addition to furthering your personal growth is essential. I will never forget my first day at EPPD when the waste management specialist, Ms. Kima Gardner, told me that she remembered me from some of the national conferences I attended and my passion for waste management made an impression on her. I encourage all of you to take advantage of all that the WOW program offers. Enhance those skills and competencies that are distinctive attributes of a UE graduate. They will serve you well. Thank you to the University of the West Indies, Republic Bank Limited, and CAF. Students, I wish you all the best for World of Work 2025. And I would like to end as I began with my quote from my awards ceremony. Family prayer and support is the foundation for success. Thank you. Thank you so much, Viani, for telling our students what an invaluable endeavor participating in the World of Work program can be. At this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Michelle Dindial, Branch Sales Manager, Republic Bank Limited, our contributing sponsor, to bring welcome in. Professor Derek Chady, Deputy Principal of the UE St. Augustine Campus, and other members of the campus executive management team. Feature speaker, Dr. Camille Wardrop Alin, Aerospace Engineer, CEO, and Founder, Arusha Space LLC. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's a true pleasure to be here as we celebrate the launch of UE's World of Work 2024-2025. Republic Bank is extremely proud to partner with the University of the West Indies once again in supporting this outstanding program. We believe that UE's World of Work is one of the most comprehensive initiatives of its kind in our country offering invaluable opportunities for growth and development. To the final year students here today, rest assured that there is no better program to enhance your career potential and advance your personal development. As you stand on the brink of graduation, you're about to embark on one of the most significant journeys of your life. It's crucial that you not only be ready to seize opportunities that come your way, but also to ensure that you're in the best possible position to make the most of them. The workplace is rapidly evolving. Technological advancements, globalization, and shifting economic conditions are reshaping the professional landscape. In this environment, adaptability is key to success. To thrive, there are essential transferable skills that serve as your guide in navigating the complexities of the workplace. The beauty of these skills is that they are universal. Whether you're studying social sciences, science and technology, humanities and education, food and agriculture, or law, these competencies are within your reach. They include communication skills, adaptability and flexibility, critical thinking and problem solving, collaborative skills, digital literacy, and emotional intelligence. 
Mastering these skills will allow you to excel across job roles and industries. As you step into adulthood, you'll find that these abilities will not only enhance your professional life, but will also be beneficial in your personal life. Your time at UWE, coupled with the World of Work program, is designed to give you a head start. It's about bridging the gap between acquiring knowledge and applying it in real-world business settings. So, I encourage you to approach World of Work with enthusiasm and fully engage in every opportunity it offers. If you do, I'm confident that this program will be one of the most memorable experiences of your life. On that note, I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all the teams and partner organizations that come together year after year to make this program run so smoothly. Though you may make it look effortless, I know the coordination required is not a small feat. Republic Bank is honored to partner with you in shaping the next generation of professionals in our country, and by extension, the region. To the final year students, keep moving forward. You're almost there, ready to embark on the next chapter of your journey. Republic Bank is here to support, to support you in every step of the way, whether it is in your academic life, your career, or the personal milestones that are part of your unique path to success. Wishing you all the very best in the exciting times ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Dindial, and I want to repeat there is no better program across, did you say across the globe? I'll put that in. <laughs> across the globe, I'm certain, to enhance your professional development. Thank you so much and thank you for your continued support. At this time, I would like to, I'd like you to turn your eyes to the screen. We'll have another testimony from Mr. Jabari Gordon, again, a former WOW participant, currently serving as infrastructure delivery specialist at Unicredit Bank in Italy. Okay. I hope you can hear me. Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon to all the esteemed guests and good afternoon to the students. My name is Jabari Gordon, and as said by Ms. Lewis, I am currently an infrastructure delivery specialist at Unicredit Bank in Italy. I am also a former World of Work uh, participant. I would have uh, completed my degree in computer science and management at the University of the West Indies, and then my master's at uh, Arthur Lovejack Graduate School. Uh, my journey with the World of Work program started as a student, but I was fortunate enough to experience the program from multiple perspectives. I was able to participate as a, as a student assistant, and even after my career at the UE, I was able to participate as an interviewer. While I didn't experience the hard work of planning the event, and a side note, I will say a very big thank you to all of the staff at the UE who helps plan this event and all of the sponsors, because it's a lot of work, trust me. I have seen firsthand how comprehensive and impactful the World of Work program can be. From the resume writing to the interview preparation, the program has truly helped shape my career. One of the most valuable things that I would have learned was that a resume is not a one-size-fits-all document. I believe before the world of work, it was copy, paste, and sent to everyone. Now it's uh, customized. It is, I understand better what is requested by a company or a recruiter, and I will customize my, my uh, CV to match what is requested. 
Additionally, the interview preparation and mock interviews were instrumental in helping me overcome some nerves and improve my uh, confidence with some interviews. At times, I would have experienced some nerves before the interview or sometimes even during the interview, but I would usually try to focus and remember what I would have learned during the World of Work sessions to help either prepare or calm myself just a bit more. Um, I can't emphasize enough, really, the importance of, of attending all of these segments. From my own experience as an interviewer during the mock interviews, it is usually very clear who has attended the uh, sessions and who has not. In fact, I could give you an example of a student that I would have interviewed as an interviewer. And he impressed me so much that the mock interview moved from being a mock interview to a real interview. And we were able to hire him at the company that I was at at the point in time. And I understood that he would have attended all of the, uh, the uh, sessions. And again, it's very evident, yeah? It underscores the level of preparedness and professionalism and the confidence in which the World of Work program will give you if you actually pay attention and try to attend everything that the World of Work has. Personally, one of the skills I've, I've had to work on is workplace net networking. I'm not the most social person in the workplace. I like to be by myself but it's something that I learned from the world of work that I needed to improve on quite a lot. In fact, for one of the um, interview sessions for the job that I currently have in Milan, part of it was an informal session of networking and having drinks and talking with colleagues and talking with some of the interviewers. And I had to rely heavily, and I can't stress heavily, on what I would have learned during the world of work, yeah? So I can't say it has real world um, implications, and it should really help you strengthen the, 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 the skills that you need to work on and identify those skills and learn how to improve them. So I would encourage all of you to take full advantage of this program. As I remember, it's free, so you should continue to take advantage of it. And I'm sure that since my time, it has evolved and improved, and I'm sure you will be able to take away even more than I was able to. In closing, I would like to really thank everyone from the World of Work group, from the careers, and one second, it's a long name now for in, in my time, it was a bit shorter, but I would like to thank everyone from the careers, co-curricular and community engagement department, division of student services and development for all the hard work and support for the World of Work. I would like to also give a special thanks to Republic Bank, who has also been a sponsor of the program since my time, and they are still a uh, sponsor. So a big thank you to Republic Bank. And a thank you as well to the other sponsor of this year's World of Work, CAF, for the launch and their, their sponsorship and support. Of course, finally, a big thanks to the University of the West Indies. I wouldn't be where I am without it. So thank you. Have a good day, all. Thank you so much, Jabari. There's no more left for me to say, guys. <laughs> he said it all, but please do. You would have heard from Vianney and Jabari. Please do take advantage of all the sessions. Students at this time, I've been waiting, and I know you're quite excited as well, to introduce to you Dr. Camille Wardrop Allen, founder and CEO of Arusha Space LLC, a geospatial analytics and global space consulting company that uses space space-based technology for solving challenges on Earth and in space. She's an accomplished and results-driven executive and former senior leader at NASA who dedicated her 29-year career leading change 
and advancing the areas of aerospace and space technology development. She was a leading architect in the commercialization of space, enabling billion dollar space economies in low Earth orbit and on the moon, and was the first African American to lead a major human space flight program at NASA, Johnson Space Center. She served as the deputy program manager for the commercial LEO development program and the commercial lunar payload services initiative in addition to the assistant deputy associate administrator for programs in the science, in the science mission directorate. Dr. Allen is a visionary leader in the areas of space technology in space technology application, in international development, and a change maker in revolutionizing global science and space education for women and girls, inspiring them to the next generation of scientists and engineers, work done through her Brightest Stars Foundation. Dr. Allen's collective work has spanned many regions of the world, including North America, the Caribbean, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Through her foundation, she has impacted the lives of thousands of young people around the world. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering from Howard University a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Florida A&M University, a Master's of Science in Aerospace Engineering from the University of Maryland, College Park, and a Doctorate in Educational Leadership from the University of Houston. Jabari thought our name was long. That's impressive. Dr. Allen, who was born in Trinidad and Tobago, is a licensed private pilot whose accomplishments include being a finalist in NASA astronaut selection program. She serves on several public and private sector boards and has received numerous awards and commendations from national and international organizations including several achievement medals for her contributions for NASA's missions. She serves as a space and science public diplomat for the US State Department Speakers Program and was recognized by L'Oreal Group as one of 45 prominent women who moved the Caribbean and by National Institute of Higher Education science and technology in Trinidad and Tobago as one of the Caribbean's icons in science and technology. Students, help me warmly welcome Dr. Wardrop Ali. Hello, everyone. Ooh, we'd have been here all day. <laughs> so all protocols observed. Um, it is such, I like to walk around, is that OK? Yeah. And I think I have a presentation, so let me see. Hello. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, yay. So, oh my gosh, it's such a pleasure for me to be here. You have no idea. I got in like 12.30 this morning. I live in Houston, Texas. But you know, I grew up right down the street. I still have a house there, my family house in Valse North. We moved, my dad built that house when I was three months old, so I grew up there. It's like right in the UE area, so I'm very familiar, and it's just, it's always lovely coming home, and I haven't been home since about 2019, since before the pandemic. So it's just a delight. Um, wow. Thank you, Kathy Ann. 
So Kathy Ann reached out to me through my website, right? And you were like, oh my gosh, we have this world of work. I've been trying to get you for the last three years. Our theme is prepared to launch, and we really need you. And I said, I have to come down. I think we we're going to do it virtually. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I want to interact with the students. Like, it's just so much more impactful. So I'm so delighted um, and happy that CAF said they would be our partners in getting me here. So thank you so much. Um, and you heard that long story career. I thought I would go through a little bit about my journey. Is that OK? Yes. Where I started, how I went from being this little brown girl who was born, I say, in the small dot in the Caribbean, in this country, and grew up to be on the front line of the American space program, which by far is the most prominent space program in the world. It's an amazing journey. Um, but I was one of those kids. I was the last of three girls. And my mom and my dad always stressed education. And they were like, my mother was like, look, you all are girls. You got to be self-sufficient. And the way you are self-sufficient is through education. And so my parents stressed education like that was the thing. I was telling somebody earlier, I didn't learn to cook till I was an adult. Because my mom was like, go do your studies. You, I don't want you, you know, in the kitchen here learning to cook and all that stuff. You have studies to do. So I grew up in that environment where education was so important. And I was always this curious kid, because I remember at the age of six or seven years old, I would go out and sit on the trunk of my dad's car every night and, and be so fascinated by the night sky. I didn't know what it, that was. I saw these lights in the sky that we called stars. I didn't know it was called stars at the time, but just so fascinated by the vastness of the night sky. So leave that there. Um, really good student in math. Math was my thing. That's all I wanted to do. Um, went to St. Francois Girls College. <laughs> and it's funny because, you know, I'm talking to students, and you talked about this. You have access to so much now. You have the internet, and you have cable TV, and all. I mean, what you have at your fingertips is just beyond. And I'm talking about growing up as a child of the 60s and the 70s, where we didn't have any of that, right? But I loved math. And I was a good student, um, always curious. I always say when things broke around the house, my mom didn't call my dad. She called me to fix things, because I was really good with my hands, breaking things apart, putting it together, already starting to train my mind as that analytical thinker. Um, and so I remember in high school, I think in, in, in Form 3 was the first time when I really knew that I had a gift. And it, I remember it like it was yesterday. So I said I love math, and so it was our first math program in Form 3, and it was sets. I mean, how do I remember this? And it's been like 40 years. Um, and, we, and I remember her, Ms. Grell. She came and she gave us a test. We didn't even have the, we didn't start the lessons, but she was testing us. And I was the only one who got 100 in the class. And I remember that moment of, wow there's actually something I'm really good at. Because before then, you don't know. You don't know that, you know, you, you just like floundering as a kid. And so I feel like that was a pivotal time in my life that really started building my confidence. And, um, and so I started building on that. I was one of 10 girls at the time. Girls didn't do St. Francois, all, all girls. They didn't do science. We were 10 students out of 100 or whatever, and I did all the sciences, maths, advanced math. Um, 
but those were pivotal times in my life because I was surrounded by people who believed in me and told me that you could do anything you want to do, you know? And then I was in a house with parents who said you could do anything, even though I was like trying to figure out, well, what do I want to do with my life? Okay, I love math and science. Okay, what is that? Where is that going to lead me? And um, I was telling the story earlier that all our parents knew were like five careers that existed at the time. You could be a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or a nurse. My mother was a nurse or an accountant. Those were like the only things that existed. And I'm like, I don't want to do any of that. First of all, I hate the sight of blood. I'm not going to be a doctor. As much money as they make, no. <laughs> and we had a family friend who was an engineer. At the time, I didn't know what an engineer was. He was a petroleum engineer, so he worked in Point Fortin. And I remember us, I remember thinking, wow, that's something different. I don't know what an engineer does. My mother never talked about what it is to be an engineer. But I remember asking her if he made a lot of money, and she said, I think so. And I said, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. And then I found out that you needed math and science. So great, I'm on the right track, engineering. I'm going to be an engineer. So then I'm like, OK, now what type of engineer am, am I going to be? Because there's so many different types. For the engineering students in the room, you know, there's a litany of engineering professions. And so I remember loving chemistry. And I was like, oh, maybe I could do chemical engineering. I wasn't sure what that was anyway, but it sounded good. Um, and then, of course, I could do petroleum engineering because here's this guy who I look up to, and he's a petroleum engineer. And I was thinking at the time, even though if I go away to study, I come back, I could work here in the, in the oil industry, right? But then I was always that kid who loved doing things that nobody else was doing. And so I remember we would travel a lot as a kid. And so I, I got, I really became fascinated by planes. And I was like, hmm, plane engine, how do I design a plane? That sounds cool. And then I found out aeronautical engineering and I didn't know anybody. And I thought I would come back to Trinidad and work for BWE, not knowing that BWE was, <laughs> BWE doesn't exist any, do you all know about BWE? <laughs> I'm totally dating myself, right? <laughs> it's Caribbean Airlines now. It used to be called BWE. It was the national airline. And I was like, oh, I'll come back and work for BWE. But BWE is an airline. They don't hire aeronautical engineers. That's how much I knew. So anyhow, I said, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to migrate to the US. It was natural. My sisters were already there. My mom said, you're going to go up and study. And so I was like, OK, I'll, I'm going to do aeronautical engineering. And so I, I migrate to the US. I'm in my first year of college. And this is where my life totally changes forever. And as you are going through and you're starting to think about, well, what do I want to do after I graduate? Is more, you never know where that moment will spark something in you, and it takes your life on a trajectory that you never expected. So I come home from school one day. It's January 28th, 1986. Don't do the math in your head. Don't try to figure out how old I am. <laughs> and it's the day when the Space Shuttle Challenger accident happens, if, you've, if you study history. It's NASA's program, space shuttle program, and they were launching seven astronauts at a time. This was the 25th flight, um, and they would go up for seven to 14 days, and they will come back down. On this day, it was one of the coldest days, and we launched from Florida, which, one, the weather is usually nice. It's not as hot as here, but, you know, it's a temperate, it's a tropical-ish climate. So it's nice to launch there because the weather is usually favorable for the most part. And it's the closest point to the equator from the continental US, which is why the launch complex is there. Anyhow, so it's the coldest day in February. 
And even though the engineers were like, oh, we've never tested this system to this level of temperature, there was a lot of political pressure to launch because they had, they had delayed the launch for several days and weeks and there was a lot of pressure to launch. And they launched and the space shuttle blew up upon launch and killed the seven astronauts that were on board. I remember the first teacher was flying in space. And it was in that moment I came home and it was all over TV. And I was like, wow. Besides the tragedy, my eyes just were open to this whole new world of this wasn't a plane, this was a rocket. I was like, wow, I think that's what I want to do. Instead of designing planes, I want to design the rockets, the spaceships. And I want to work for NASA. I didn't even know that place existed. And I want to be an astronaut. I didn't know that job existed. And so went through school. I went to Howard University, studied mechanical engineering, but they had an aerospace option, which is why I chose that program. Um, and I did okay. Okay. I had a few failures in, in, during my college um, <laughs> career. But I, I always say it's not where you start, it's where you finish, right? And picking yourself up after those failures and keep going. And so I got through school and I had my eye on NASA and I remember they came and they were interviewing and I interviewed and they didn't offer me a job. One, because I wasn't a US citizen at the time and you had to be a US citizen to work for NASA. Um, but two, maybe my GPA wasn't quite what they were looking for. So I was like, okay, what do I do? So I said, okay, maybe I go to grad school, I get a master's degree. Now, I didn't have a plan to go to grad school. I had a plan to get my bachelor's and then go work. Like, that's what your parents tell you. Get a job, you know? Because um, they expect you to work for 30 years, which I did. Um, but get a job, be comfortable, you know, have a family, all that stuff. And so, I was like, no, I want to work for NASA, so how am I going to get there? I need one more year to get my citizenship, so I'm going to apply to graduate school just as a waiting period. And so I applied to several graduate schools, and I got rejected from all of them. And so I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do with my life? And so I remember going into Howard one day, and they had a sign up, Florida State University, and it said, if you have this GPA and this GRE score, you know, we'll accept you. And I'm like, oh, wow, maybe I have a one more chance. Like, if I do my GRE and do well enough, I will get accepted. So I do the GRE, I study for it, I apply, and I get a letter of acceptance to go to Florida State University. Well, who knew that one, Florida State University and Florida A&M, you know, I really graduated from Florida A&M. They had a combined school of engineering. But what I didn't know was that NASA had a program with them where they would come recruiting for graduate students. And so, I tell you that because it's a lesson in that you never know where life is going to take you. And it's so important to be a yes to opportunities and to open your mind and open your heart to opportunities that come, even though it doesn't look like what you think it should look like. And so if I didn't, if all the other schools didn't reject me, and I didn't say, oh, I was going to apply to Florida State University and go there. I would have never, you know, they end up actually recruiting me. I was one of two people graduating with my master's degree from Florida State, Florida A&M University that got a job offer from NASA. And that was 30 years ago. That was where my career started, right? And so it just, it, it tells you that 
you know, life is not a straight path. And so I started my career at Kennedy Space Center as a flight systems test engineer. Actually, I have some slides. Ooh, do I have the clicker? Is it? I'm just talking. So that's like the beginning where I talk about the space shuttle and here. So I started my career as a flight systems test engineer at NASA Kennedy Space Center. And um, I was, oh my God, it was the most incredible time I remember because I just, I dreamt about the space shuttle. I had posters on my wall and all of a sudden I was here like, testing systems on the space shuttle. Like, I remember the first time I saw it up close, it was the night before launch, and I just was so overwhelmed by, and I was on the launch pad, just looking up at this monstrosi monstrosity. It was incredible. Um, and so, just that took me to, um, other positions that I've had in this picture, being a part of the Orion space capsule, which is this, this, it says NASA. I don't think this is a, um, is it a, it's not a laser, and yeah. Um, being a part of the Orion space program as the systems engineer designing all the requirements for what that is gonna be, that's this, picture on the bottom left. And the Orion capsule is where we're gonna take astronauts back to the moon next year for the first time in 50 something years. We are sending humans back to the moon. It's gonna be on that Orion capsule and I was a part of the very early design process of that spacecraft. And then uh, I worked on the International Space Station. You hear a lot about astronauts being stuck in space right now. Well, they're on the International Space Station. They're not quite stuck, but um, they, they're, not, they're not able to come back with the, the, the capsule that they went up with, but we're gonna get them back in a few months. But being a part of that. <laughs> what? It's, I mean, they're astronauts. This is their job. They love being in space. It's fine. <laughs> But the International Space Station is a science lab in space. I was the associate program scientist for the International Space Station. So this is like my career as an engineer and I have like some life lessons here. And so I talk about oftentimes following your passion, finding your passion and following your passion. My passion was space, was planes, was all of that and regardless to People around me at the time were like, I mean, now if you talk about, oh, I want to be an aerospace engineer, people may look at you sideways, but for the most part, people understand what you're saying. Back then, they were like, what the heck are you talking about, right? Um, but that didn't deter me. I just had my mindset that that is what I was going to do, and sometimes, you just have to believe in yourself, even when other people around you sometimes don't believe in you and your dreams, right? Um, be determined. It's, ooh, it wasn't easy. I mean, oftentimes you don't see people who look like me in, in the spaces of NASA when you see them on TV and stuff like that. So it was not an easy environment as a woman and a woman of color, right? But my determination and my perseverance is what allowed me to keep moving forward and keep advancing. And then I talk about the importance of mentors, like you need to have people who can guide you. Your career is not always gonna be a straight line. It's never gonna be a straight line. What am I talking about? It's never gonna be a straight line. And sometimes you're sitting here and you're like, okay, I'm graduating as an electrical engineer. What am I gonna do with that? Or where is that gonna take me? You don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to be like 30 years from now, I think I wanna be 
you know, I want to have worked at Google, you know, you're like, no, how do I go from here to the next step to the next step? And how do I surround myself with people who can help me navigate my career, right? That's really, really important. Um, and along the way, I talked about wanting to be an astronaut. So I was on the very short list um, at some point to be selected as an astronaut can, um, uh, for NASA's, NASA's uh, astronaut program. These are some pictures here of my interview process and my training, flying in a microgravity um, airplane and, and the simulation of, of microgravity. I didn't get selected that year, but I tell you, when I look back, it's not always about the destination. And yes, I'm gonna fly in space one day, um, especially now that we're opening up space to, um, you know, people who could pay money and go. Um, but it's not always about the destination. It's often about the journey, what it took for me to even get to that point where I was on the very short list, one of 100 out of thousands of applicants who wanted to go and what they saw in me that I got to that point and I needed to celebrate that. And so sometimes you don't get to where that thing, but you look back and you're like, who did I become in the journey to that thing, right? So you stop and you reflect on that and it's really important. And then I started rising through the ranks and if you tell me, I mean, Five years ago, if you told me, Camille, you would be like leading major programs and you know, I would be like, you're crazy. Wasn't happening. But something happened when I was in the International Space, Pro St Space Station program. I was there for like eight years. And I was like, God, this is not a challenge for me anymore. Like, I could do this work in my sleep. Why am I still here? I think I was trying to prove something to somebody. Don't ever do that, by the way. <laughs> you sacrifice more about you than it is about the other person. Um, and so I decided to apply for this detail assignment at NASA headquarters in Washington, DC. And it was a very high level position, maybe two levels above where I was. And people around me were like, mm. I don't know why she thinks she could get this job. And I was like, watch me. <laughs> and I applied and I had to interview with other people from across all the NASA centers, which is all over the US. And I got selected, which told you something. And I was stepping out of my comfort zone because all my career up until that point I had worked on all these human spaceflight programs, which are programs involving humans flying in space. And I was like, well, I want to learn about the planetary missions, the astrophysical missions, the James Webb Space Telescope, right? Um, and so I stepped into this role in the science office at NASA, not knowing anything about science, um, and they are watching me like, you came from human space flight and you came from Johnson Space Center, why are you here? And I'm like, well, I'm here to expand my toolkit. Like add a tool, a new tool to my toolkit. And sometimes you gotta step out of your comfort zone. That's where growth happens. It's when you step out of your comfort zone and it's really uncomfortable. I didn't know these people, I didn't know the job, but I trusted that I could learn and I was a critical thinker and a problem solver. And they were throwing assignments at me, hoping probably that I would fail. And I took it on and I was the first person to, to develop this policy for them um, called the ride share policy where we would launch these massive, like say earth science missions, for example, these massive satellites. But the rocket would be so big, it had a lot of extra capacity on it. So they wanted to be able to launch smaller satellites along with that big satellite. So these satellites would ride along with the bigger satellite, it's called ride share. And they couldn't figure out how to do that. And I came in and I developed a team, I pulled a team together 
And at the end of my assignment, I handed them a rideshare policy. Now, it wasn't easy, and it, I didn't get a lot of buy-in for that because it would have changed how they were doing business. But I tell you, last year, one of the leaders from that organization came to visit me, and she said, Camille, we are still using this policy to this day, and we really appreciated all the work you did on that. And so I, it was me stepping out of my comfort zone, very uncomfortable, but I grew so much. And the beauty of that was I gained so many new advocates for my career that when I left headquarters and I went back to Johnson Space Center, I got promoted. I got a new position. And so that was, uh oh, where is it? Oh. I guess I don't have the picture. She took, huh. Oh. Wait, hold on, sorry. There were some pictures I had. My designer took it out, okay. So when I went back to Johnson, I was asked to stand up the commercialization program. And so you talk about SpaceX, you know about SpaceX, right? The most visible private sector company in the world of space. Well, SpaceX didn't get to space be SpaceX by themselves. Everybody thinks, oh, Elon developed these rockets. Yes, he did, but he has customers, and his customers are the US government and NASA. Um, and so I was asked to help stand up a program very similar to what we were able to do with SpaceX, except for the moon. It's called the Commercial Lunar Payload Services. And so earlier this year, I wish I had the pictures, oh my god. Um, there was this private company, you may have heard about it, that landed on the moon. First time ever in the history of space flight that a private company was able to um, accomplish this feat. When the lander landed, it kind of fell over. Did anybody hear about that? Did you, do you follow space news at all? Okay. <laughs> So, um, but that program was a program I started where it was a public-private partnership. So NASA invested in these private companies to develop this transportation system. And what they did was they started buying services from these companies to transport their science instruments to the moon. And so I started that program. The first four awards, um, I led the selections for those. And then I moved from there to the last position I had before I retired, which is developing the, the follow-on to the International Space Station, but built by commercial companies. And you're going to see that soon, called the Commercial um, Low Earth Orbit Development Program or Destinations, which are space stations or hotels in space. You will see that coming up in a few years. But I was asked to lead that, and I was the first African American to lead any kind of major human spaceflight program um, at Johnson Space Center, which is incredible. So if you told me that would have happened five or six or seven years ago, I would have told you, no way. But along the way, what I learned about um, myself and the importance of uh, advocating for yourself and your career, when people said, you couldn't possibly get accepted into the science office. I was like, no, this is my career, and I know that I want to grow, and I want to expand my, my toolkit, right, my, my skill set. Um, and so it's important that you do that. You are going to be faced with that along your career, and you're going to have to sometimes be like, no, I know what is best for me, and I'm going to find people who would support me in that, right? Stepping out of your comfort zone, I talk about that. You can't always be comfortable. It's nice to be comfortable. We feel safe when we are comfortable, but it's not always where you grow and where you become really attractive for other employers, right? So you gotta expand. And just being true to yourself and being your authentic self and showing up in spaces, a lot of times, especially as women, 
I know the women in the house would, would, would um, resonate with this. We kind of get this thing we call imposter syndrome. We know what that is. Where you're like, oh my God, I'm in this position. But in your mind, you're like, I don't think I belong here. What am I doing here? You know? And so it's really important that you believe in yourself and you know that you belong in these spaces. And I'm, I always talk about the fact that growing up in Trinidad is really what gave me the fortitude um, to navigate the spaces at NASA. And I knew not only did I belong in the room, but I deserved a place at the table and that I had a voice and I had something to say. And people really respected me for that. Um, now, okay, so fast forward 29 years, I retired in January. Oh my goodness. I didn't think that day would come. And talk about your, your life going in all these different paths. Who knew I would be an entrepreneur? But I am. I stepped into the world of entrepreneurship as my next career. And I started my company because I know how important space is going to be to the world. I believe in the next 10 years, every country, even countries in the Caribbean, if I could get these leaders to believe in it, would have some kind of participation in space. Now, I'm not talking about Trinidad sending somebody to the moon. That may not make a lot of sense when we have so many problems we have to solve here. But when you think of space, we also look at space and we study Earth. We look at Earth from the vantage point of space, which is something emerging countries could get behind, right? So we use satellites and satellite data, and we use AI and machine learning to process and analyze that data for solving problems here, whether it's in climate, whether it's in agriculture, whether it's in managing um, water resources or managing natural resources. You can use satellites to do all that. And so I wanted to create a business around that, and that's what my company, Arusha Space, is. Um, and then you talked about, Kathy Ann talked about my passion for making a difference, especially with girls. Only 30% or less than 30% of all um, engineers and scientists in the world and even in the US are women. And I wanted to do something about that. How do we increase the participation of women and girls in science, technology, and engineering? Um, and a lot of it is about building confidence, but a lot of it is seeing yourself represented in these fields, right? Representation matters. So having role models, having mentors, and so I do a lot of work all over the world, including here in Trinidad, in that area. And then along the way, finding balance is not always about work as you are getting ready to start your careers. You gotta find balance. You're gonna wanna have a family one day, right? Um, and there's more to life than work. And so for me, I have found that in like travel. I've traveled to over almost 40 countries. Um, I have a daughter who is a grown woman now, but she and I uh, find we travel around the world. Um, I fly planes, I do adventurous things, I'm gonna fly in space one day. But all that is really part of what makes life so fulfilling. You gotta have that, right? Your family wants to see you, they've helped you get this far, and it's important to um, you know, be present to them. And so in closing, I have something I wrote something here that I hope makes a difference for you. So here we go. It says, what I know for sure is that each of us has something burning inside of us, a passion for something that if we work hard enough, we will find. 
There is a light within each of you that if you believe in yourself and you allow to let shine, you would illuminate not only your communities and nation, but indeed our world. There is also no substitute for determination, perseverance, and excellence. Excellence is actually one of those things that people pay attention to. Everybody wants the best on their team, right? It transcends race, it transcends ethnicity, it transcends gender. But even more than that, there's no substitute for believing in yourself. Believing in yourself will give you the confidence to find your voice. And once that happens, there's no turning back. I know for you, it took a lot for you to get here to this point. I am certain a lot of late nights studying, balancing school, extracurricular activities, all the other things that are needed for you to compete for access to the best, best colleges and the best positions for you. But you are here and being here is truly an honor and a privilege and a blessing. You didn't get here by yourself, but with the love and support of the people in your family and your communities, your professors, who push and believe in you. They have the hope of a brighter future for you. We all do. Know that we are all created for greatness. And we are all created to reach our fullest potential. And as one of my role models, Dr. Martin Luther King said, not everyone can be famous, but everyone can be great because greatness is measured by your service. Even in our smallest sphere of influence, we can all be of service. So most of my adult life, the words of Marianne Williamson have stuck with me. This is some that fueled me through my career. It's empowered me to reach for the stars. I know everyone in this room has heard these words, but I thought on this occasion, it was most fitting to share them with you. And it goes something like this. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is not our darkness but our light that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God and your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people don't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to manifest the glory of God within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in every one of us. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated by our fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So I end with this. The formula for me, and I think you will find this for you, dreaming big dreams, discovering your life's calling, believing in yourself and your power to manifest your dreams, will lead you to reach your fullest potential. And so this is my question for you. What would the future of this nation and our world be if you took up the mantle, answered your call, and fulfilled your destiny for greatness? Which of you 
would be responsible for leaving that legacy. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so guys, I usually have like a little notes thing going on, um, but I have nothing to add. Thank you, Dr. Allen, for that really inspiring. <clears throat> and thought-provoking address. It was well worth the wait. And so students, um, we actually connected on LinkedIn. So, when we have our LinkedIn creation and then the optimization session, you want to make sure that you attend, yes? So, at this juncture, I want to introduce Ms. Nandi Mitchell, Senior Student Services Assistant in the Careers, Co-Curricular and Community Engagement Department to bring closing remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. So much things were said this, this afternoon. We had Professor Chady who reminded you, the students, of your unique position as Gen Z, that you have the access to tools and opportunities that break traditional barriers. He reminded you not to be afraid to challenge the status quo and seek careers that fuel meaning and purpose. We had the words of our former graduates and WOW participants, Viani Marie Williams. She underscored the importance of community connection, networking, family, and a higher power. You cannot do it alone. And Jabari Gordon, he showed us that the WOW program is practical, it's relevant, and the information you, you gain, you can use it in real world circumstances. And we had our partner, RBL, Ms. Dindial, who also highlighted the skills and tools needed that you will gain during the program that will enhance your professional development. And of course, our feature speaker, Dr. Waldrop Aline. What can I say? <laughs> you are the embodiment of what Dr. Chidi said earlier extraordinary, unshakable belief in your potential. Your career journey is an amazing one, and so many nuggets of wisdom. You said yes to opportunities. You showed up. Oftentimes, students, that's more than half the battle, just showing up and being ready. You said find your passion, follow your passion, believe in yourself, seek mentors, Step outside of your comfort zone, be authentic, advocate for yourself in your career. You talked about using your voice and letting your light shine and so, so much more. So students, you see, world of work, it's not just talk. We have shown you what is possible with all the speakers that we've had here today. And we here at UWE, we are rooting for you all. Your success is our success. So go forth, take part in the program. We're going to be looking out for you all. And, you know, all the best. I do want to say a few, I do want to give a vote of thanks as well. I want to thank the Deputy Principal, Professor Chady, for attending, as well as uh, our partner, RBL, Ms. Dindial. Also, CAF, our contributing sponsor. I would like to thank our testimonial speakers, Viani Marie, as well as Jabari. I would also like to take the time to thank the Marketing and Communications Department for all their support. Amazing, Josanne Green. I don't know where you are, but thank you. And all those in the department who would have um, supported her in supporting us, as well as my colleagues, 
in what I like to, what we like to say C3 for short, careers, co-curricular and community engagement. Thank you, colleagues, wherever you are. Thank you for all your work. And I also want to do a little bit of housekeeping, if I may. Students, just want to cue, cue you into what's coming up next. We have our resume writing workshops, which you heard Jabari talk about earlier. So that's going to be next week, Thursday, the 10th. We have one at the LRC Auditorium at 1.30. And then we have another one on the 17th. That one is going to be virtual, so look out for it. If you haven't registered for World of Work, be sure to do that. You will get emails giving you regular updates. And I would also like to take the time to remind you all of the session this afternoon at 5 p.m., right, where you get another opportunity to interact with our featured speaker and some other guests. Um, who will be here this afternoon. So please, if you would like to stay, we invite you to stay. Tell your friends that they need to be here at five because it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing, right? So that is it for now. I would ask that students, if you could exit through the exit upstairs, and we'll have our guests exit through the exit downstairs. Thank you all so very much for your attention, and I will see you later.